Hey guys, what's up Redactions here and welcome back to this brand new video. Karting is the most amazing sport in the world. But it can be a little bit overwhelming to start sometimes with so much information, so many choices and so many different opportunities. I've been in the sport for almost 10 years now so I've seen enough, experienced enough and I I've, had, I've had enough things happen to me. So that is why in this video I'll be giving you guys 3 tips that in my opinion every newcomer could find useful. So without further ado, let's dive into the first one. Tip number 1 know what you are going to start gather as much information as possible and i don't just mean for things on the track but also off the track how much money is going to cost you in total how much time you're going to spend what kind of tools and equipment you need everything time and long-term costs are a lot of things that most drivers usually forget when they first buy their own car so in my opinion the best thing you can do is maybe ask your question don't act on any of the answers but first rethink about everything that has been said to you Reevaluate all the answers you got and after you've given it a real careful thought only then decide what you are going to do or what you are going to buy in your journey in the karting world you will definitely make wrong decisions but it is important that you will learn from them and then the next time you will recognize it beforehand this is something that we have got horribly wrong as well we used to always mess about with all types of different karting brands and senior road techs but in the end there is a reason that 85% of the people drive an OTK chassis which is behind me now which is what I drive now as well so don't be stubborn just look at what other people do there's absolutely no shame in copying what someone else is doing especially not in karting also the internet can be a great source for information if you want some inside information about karting well watch my channel but if you're looking for more setup and technical related stuff then the power republic youtube channel can be a great great source of information these guys are the tony kart dealers from down under and they really have a lot of knowledge about setup uh, different parts everything go go check out that channel but only after you've watched this video because i need to watch time and if you actually watch this video to the end that's helpful for the algorithm there you guys by the way if you are new to the sport or if you end up finding any of these tips useful then i would appreciate it enormously if you would hit those like and subscribe buttons not only will you then not miss any new videos of me with more information that you could use, but also for you it's just a small few clicks and for me it really helps a lot. It's one step closer to my goal of one day reaching 100,000 subs. Tip number two, set realistic expectations. Karting is a difficult sport you know. There are a load of different factors other than a driver's talent that go into whether you get a good result or not. And a lot of those factors are sadly tied to how much of a budget you have. And now guys, the best reason to set realistic expectations is just to be truthful with yourself. Let's be honest, most people, if not 100% of the people watching this video right now will not be the next F1 driver. And of course that's okay, but there are a lot of people on the karting track who do think that they are the next F1 driver. And maybe they are, but if they keep this in their mind for all this time and then it eventually ends up not happening, then that will be a huge disappointment. So in order to set realistic expectations for yourself, you really need to have a clear vision of what your current situation is and of how talented you are yourself. I'll tell you some of my personal examples. In my first race at the Dutch Championship back in 2015, me and my dad knew absolutely nothing about the sport. We had a car that was a few years old, we had an engine that was a few years old. And we were going to enter the freaking national championship of Rotex Max. That, 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 like, that level was... So we went into the weekend with the following thought. If we don't finish last on track, then we had a good weekend. And I didn't finish last on track, so that was a very good debut in my books. Another example, a little bit of a more current one. You guys know that before the pandemic I had been karting for a couple of years. And then at the beginning of 2020 I unfortunately had to stop. Now the year before it started to go better with karting and we also decided to spend a little bit more money on it. So that meant that I had a coach and mechanic for pretty much every time I went out. I had uh, new tires for pretty much every time I went out. And I even had a new chassis every couple of races. So I, I, really, I really did have a good situation back then. So at the end of 2019 when I finally understood how karting worked. I also understood that having a little bit of a bigger budget actually helped me in achieving the full potential that I have in me. And on some occasions I even could battle for the top 5 within my national Dutch championship. Now we have a little bit of a smaller budget so I uh, get new tires less often. I have to stretch out my chassis for a little bit longer. I never have a mechanic now when I go testing. And those are all, yeah, quite, quite some drawbacks. And there are some drivers who, if they were in my situation, could still, you know, uh, be at the front or even win races. But I know for myself that I, as a driver, am actually not talented enough to be able to do that. I really need my testing days. And being so self-aware is something that most drivers just cannot do. But I really, really advise you to be truthful to yourself. And because I know this about myself, my goal has also changed. My goal is now to be back at the level I was before the pandemic with the smaller budget I have now. So that I can battle for those sweet, sweet podiums again. 
And also, I just think it's cool to be able to battle the guys that have tens of thousands of euros, whilst you only have a small fraction of that. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that you shouldn't be ambitious or shouldn't try to go for the top. No, I'm not saying that at all. Of course, I want to win and I keep trying this, even though I know that I might never win a race. I know that's a very good possibility that I will never win a race. But I know maybe if I'm lucky one day and I get myself together, I could. And just the fact that I know that I could win a race if everything goes well, that's the thing that keeps me going. So in short, be ambitious, but also be realistic. Be truthful to yourself. Strive to be the best version of yourself, but don't let it consume you. In this clip I found of Dr. Phil, I think he explains it really well. I've met a lot of people that say, you know what? I'm gonna write the great American novel. I'm gonna write the next big hit song. And you know what I say? That's great. You should follow your dream to the extent you can afford it. Oh, great. that's a good way to put it. By the way, guys, if you want to join a community full of sim racers and other carters, then I strongly recommend joining my Discord server. In here, there are about 500 people now, and they are all carters or sim racers from all over the world. And I'm sure you feel right at home in there. The link is in the description. It's free to join. And if you don't like it, you can just always change your mind later on. So join it. Link is down there. And now, last but not least, tip number three. Braking is for pussies. No, I'm just kidding. If you are on a budget, don't always go for what seems like the cheapest option. Actually, in Dutch, we have a beautiful saying for this, which is goedkoop is duurkoop, which means cheap is expensive. And by this we mean, well, you can probably guess it. If you buy something cheap, you might be cheaper off initially, but then after a while when it breaks or anything happens, you will end up paying more either with money or with something else. Let's explain this by using an example. Let's say you want to start karting and you find a super super cheap used kart online. Then you take it to the track and it's all fun and good, but then after about a couple of laps the engine fails. This makes you lock up the rear axle, steer violently to the left and then with whatever shitty top speed that that thing reached, you go face first into a concrete wall. Now not only will the repair bill be 5 times the amount you spent on the kart initially, you will have also broken both of your legs and worst of all, you would have looked like a complete idiot. And yes guys, I know karting is expensive and I also know that not everyone has a few thousand dollars or euros lying around to buy a second hand kart. I, I really do know that. So to give you guys a little bit of a helping hand, here are a few things that you should do. If you want to buy a second hand kart, go to a big karting team. Usually they have one of drivers that buy a kart for just one race and then get rid of it. So these things are basically brand new apart from a few minor nicks here and there. And more often than not, they will be sold for half the price of a new kart and maybe even less. Actually, the kart I own right now also was pre-owned by someone who did the, uh, what was it? The Rotex Max Golden Trophy with it. So when we bought it, it had like five or six running days on it. And it was more than half as cheap as when you buy it brand new. Also, the same actually goes for engines. This bad boy that I have right here is actually my good trainings engine and you guys know it. And I am leaking fuel on my pants, but that's okay. I still have to clean this thing anyway because I didn't have time to clean it yet after testing last time. Anyways, back to this thing. This thing is an ex-race engine from like 2018, but it just wasn't good enough anymore to use in races. So now it's a training engine, it's retired and it's with me. So even though it is used and only costs about half as much for the entire package than a brand new one, so that's carburetor, airbox, electronics, exhaust, everything, it still runs better than an engine that's actually brand new out of the box. But let's put it down for now because it's starting to get heavy. Ugh. Nice, now my hands are all dirty again. Well, that's what you get when you do karting. <laughs> So for half of the price for an entire engine package, you will get a package that you can have fun with for a long, long time. Now here I will recommend a couple of brands to you that are either fairly priced, very high quality or necessary or all three of them. First of all, OTK. Most products by OTK are super high quality at a decent price. Really, if you just own anything that has the OTK logo on it, you know it's a good product. Now, for the engine, Rotex Max is a solid choice if you just want to buy a kart for fun. It is two-stroke, but compared to other two-strokes, it actually requires a lot less maintenance and all of that stuff. Also, Rotex engines are just really, really reliable. And if you don't plan on racing with them, you can even just get a non-Evo one, which are ridiculously cheap these days. For racing gear, I recommend bands like OMP, Alpine Stars or Free. Especially the brands OMP and Alpine Stars have produced some really good stuff at some really affordable prices, which are ideal for beginners. Now, if you're a beginner and you are on a little bit of a budget, for your helmet, I recommend getting a Zamp one. These are the cheapest ones that actually have decent quality and are actually good at protecting your head. Because these are the cheapest ones that have the official FIA, uh, you know, approval ratings on them. Now, let's say you want to spend a little bit more on your helmet and want to look a little bit better. Then I recommend getting an Arai helmet. Well, this is one of them. This is my GP6S. And uh, well, if you buy one brand new, of course, it will come in white. And if you want to spend even a little bit more, then you can get it spray painted like I have. 
Now, if you buy one of these Arai helmets, you really can't go wrong. The quality is super high, the safety is super good. So yeah, this is always a safe option. Now, another tip I have for you guys is to visit the K-Racing webshop. K-Racing are dealers of OTK, Rotex and OMP products and they are also my sponsors for this entire season. And for the viewers of my channel, they now have some awesome, awesome discounts. If you actually head over to their website, fill your basket with all kinds of Rotex, OMP or OTK stuff and then use the code RED10 on checkout, you'll get a 10% discount. And if you decide to make an account on their website, you can get even more of a discount. Really, if you do both of these things, you cannot find these products cheaper anywhere else on the entire internet or maybe even in the world. They even have a page full of used products that have only been used for like a couple of sessions but still have massive, massive discounts on them. So in the description, I have linked a video in which I will step by step explain to you how to get the maximum discount on your product. So go check it out and a massive shout out to K Racing for sponsoring me for this entire season. So if you guys have any tips that you think are worth sharing, then post them in the comments down below. Let's make the comment section of this video a source of free information for everyone to see, read and post their own opinions in. Now if you found this video useful but you are wondering what kind of cars you could do with the amount of money that you have, then I would strongly recommend checking out this video. In here, I will explain karting all the way from 1,000 euros per year to 250,000 euros per year. So really, there's something in there for everybody. This video, however, is done and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.